hockey camp also. I like that they've got somebody now that can help seal the deal with objectives. And if they just win a couple of those mid-game fights, uh, M-Power should help them overpower NP. Whoa! I know, that was beautiful. Mott, this is you, man. This is game three. Let's see it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We are here in the game three of the grand finals in a best of five series. It has turned into a best of three, as Suns fan alluded so perfectly earlier. We are going to jump into the game in just a moment. Some interesting picks to be sure coming out. We don't see too much of Magnus uh, anymore on the off lane, and, and you could definitely say the same for Marana, especially at that safe lane role for Eternal Envy. So some interesting picks here, Drasko, as we jump into the game. I'm really a big fan of the uh, the Ench. More so because of what newbie have picked into it, right? So you have this jug, you can chunk down with impetus. Same thing with DK. DK is never going to have that really long reach. So newbie are heavily reliant upon the clockwork and the Magnus getting into the back and just causing some chaos. You know, get a hook shot, get an RP. But it's really hard to play Magnus against their team. So KP is going to have to be super careful about how he uses his RPs and team fights. And I think just that fact alone means that again if AUI has a good start he's going to go into the game he's going to get you know eventually hurricane pike and what have you and just start annihilating people and there is not really a lot that they can do about it I'm excited for it man I, we we get to see AUI's enchantress every so often and it's usually a special treat people are banning it out for a reason they banned out the pili die io which has got to feel good for him and then of course the tree and protector for AUI so a couple of those supports banned out and you have to kind of pick and choose what you want to play up against and if you're a newbie, it sounds like they want to play up against the Enchantress. We'll see how that's going to go. Uh, the way it's landing, though, again, KP is going to be in that off lane. He will probably skip Skewer if he needs to here. MSS is going to go and do some auto attacks. But again, uh, looks like they don't have the lockdown, so he won't even need to skill that up. He goes for the poor man's shield, by the way. Magnus, okay at farming jungle camps, especially when he gets the, like, the Iron Talon, the Quelling Blade. So something to keep in mind, I suppose, for uh, KP. This is one of those games that's going to be... I don't even know. So newbie have this, I guess, support, clockwork, and a CM, right? So the CM was picked for obvious reasons. They they take the CM just to counter the AUI Enchantress, but what if they just farm? Then you just have this like clockwork running around, and that happens, right? You just get lifted, and then you get the thrown room, away. Though. Oh, battery soul, look at all that damage. Doing nothing. Kaka's gonna get turned on instead. Overwhelming odds gives the move speed boost to MSS, but uh, I don't think they'll find any further damage here against these three heroes. But you're right, though. AUI could kind of just roam out jungle, and then you have a Kaka. Oh, hold that thought. Mugi just... They're trying to, I think, bait out the Blade Fury from uh, Mugi, but they weren't able to do so. Either way, that's fine. Interesting lane bottom. Don't think I've seen this one before. No. It should be enough to pressure MSS though, but with honestly with these lanes, I think they might just rotate Envy bottom because if Envy's bottom, there's not really a whole lot of kill opportunity, and MSS will do more than okay in a one v one against Mag. I honestly think that MSS would do better than Envy can in a one v one because Poor Man Shield is OP. It's pretty good, pretty solid if they want to go that route. And yeah, you saw actually it was funny. KP came bottom, dropped I think a ward, and then it was like uh. Okay, well, there's everybody down here. I better rotate top. And the musical lanes occurred, so Nubia has brought down their aggressive trial lane down bottom. Uh, and this is kind of what we were talking about, though. AUI 2000 is just in the jungle, and now you have a Romain clockwork for Kaka. Not really going to be able to find anything too important. They also rotate up top, Pile I Die. KP might get Telekinesis, but is the arrow enough damage? He's level 2, but he does have the uh, leap instead of the Starstorm, so not uh, enough damage to secure the skills. KP gets underneath the tower. Pretty tanky, especially with the poor man's shield, so. Good attempt, but no such luck there for NP. At the very least, they're able to apply some pressure. It'll secure Envy some farm. And, you know, the other cool thing you can do with Cormorana is just arrow the jungle creeps, right? Find a big creep, arrow it, get that bonus gold in the XP. It's very little commitment that you have to do for that as well. So it's mm -hmm. not like you're losing out on the laning phase. Yeah. Already putting pressure, though, in this top lane. Could be pretty solid. Uh, mid lane is a matchup we haven't really talked about. Fought to Queen of Pain against SCCC on the DK. With a poor mid shield and eventually some levels in Dragon Blood. Should be pretty good. This matchup is pretty even, to be honest. Because of the uptime on Breathe Fire, it lasts 11 seconds. So once you get it to level 4, it has pretty much a 100% uptime. And like you mentioned with Dragon's Blood, you just can't be harassed. Even with things like Dagger, you eventually get to your bottle. 
it's just he's infinite. You, you need some kind of magical burst or like pure damage or whatever to kill Dragon Knight at a, right. at a mid game stage or even a laning phase. Super tanky hero. So I mean, I imagine it's kind of interesting. You have a DK, but not much else put. Not not much uh, push coming out from Newbie other than the DK. So maybe they juggle a bit later on. Uh, KP top lane fade bolt. Not enough damage. Thirty eight HP. He is out of regen though, which means he's gonna have to either travel back home or suicide. It looks like it's gonna be the latter. As he is gonna buy out. See you later. However, he is dead for twenty six seconds. By the way. So, I guess... I think it's still technically it's still, it's still Yeah, I think people have done the math. Uh, it's not... You don't want to do either, to be fair, but... You have to in this situation. I haven't actually sat there in a lobby and done traced the how long it would take to, to walk back to base. You haven't done the math, Andy? I have not done the math. I try not to die, actually, in my Dota games. Yeah, I thought you were a better person than that. No, I, I feed all the time. You're kidding me. I'm <laughs> awful at this game. I'm literally just poop. <laughs> but yeah, believe in yourself. Good, uh, good landing phase so far. The queen is pulling a little bit ahead of the DK at the moment, and unfortunately, you know, newbie they haven't really been able to find a whole heck of a lot with their supports. But Faith is still getting some levels. He's just going for the aggressive jungle since he knows that you know AUI is kind of walking around the bottom lane, and there's a pretty low chance that a, a solo Rubik is really going to be able to do much. Right. Taka and Faith just roaming. It's great. It's great. AUI 2000 finds himself a nice little regen rune. He might keep. Eh, never mind. Courier. Oh, ensnared up. Oh, AUI sick. Ensnared from the Dark Troll Summoner. He saw it, ensnared it instantly. Oh, the AUI 2000 Enchantress strikes again. You have a couple of heroes now chasing him down between Kaka and Faith. He even gets the bounty rune. He's going to head all the way to the north. He has a TP scroll if need be as well. Pretty nice stuff there from AUI 2000. How's that balance? How can you just throw a net at a courier like that? Because it's like one of know. the few heroes that can, because he has the creep. I don't know. That's the only reason I That's pretty, pretty good snipe, though, because it means that the DK is not going to be able to do any uh, bottle crowing. And because Queen is obviously going to have a room control advantage over a DK because of Blink. And I guess both teams have vision of the, uh, vision of the runes, but they know probably that AUI is in their jungle now. And that's going to mean that you know KP could potentially be in trouble. Could try to harass S Triple C, but that seems like kind of a waste of time, I guess, considering Fatha's already winning his lane anyway. Right. Yeah. This is, uh, it looks like the rotation is going to come. AUI is walking up, and they're going to try to find maybe a lift into an arrow. Pilot Eye trying to set himself up. But KP's backing, however, they will have the ensnare ready. The shockwave will come first. Now the ensnare to fly through the arrow. Uh, he actually enchanted the siege creep. It does a lot of damage. The body blocks. AUI 2000. No way. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. The enchant of the siege creep. Oh god. He's so good. He's so good. It's actually ridiculous. That, that was insane. Bottom lane 2. Kaka behind enemy lines here. They're going for a dive onto MSS. I believe MSS is in some trouble. Blade Fury, he does have a salve, but uh, press the attack. Is it going to be enough? It's the Frostbite that gets the kill. They will get an offlander each as the trade comes through. However, the Tier 1 tower is already dead in the top lane at 6 minutes in. Nuts. Well, they had a double Siege Creep. The timing of that was so perfect because the Siege Creep was spawning. He happens to get the first blood on KP. And, you know, even barring the insane micro it took to do that, Getting the tower anyway would have been enough, right? But he gets the kill and the tower. Right. Oh, boy. It's, it's looking like a not-so-great early game here for newbie. Dude, I, we were wondering, what, what do you ban? Is it the IO? Is it the, the Triumph Protector? I almost feel like the Triumph Protector would have been better to leave in, considering how this Enchantress is played for AUI 2000. But again, I mean, you know, hindsight's 2020 kind of thing. And it's, all, it's only the early game. It's six and a half minutes in. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. It's like a pick your poison situation. Right. Like, do we want potentially our laning phase to be completely awful? Because then <laughs> we can have Enchantress. Or do we want the hero that's going to enable NP to play their split push style and make it a lot harder for us to punish it, which is what the tree offers. And also the tower longevity as well. I think that hero plays into their style probably better than anything other than maybe Wisp. Fair so I, I do kind of agree with the fans uh, of Newbie. But yeah, this is still devastating performance here for me anyway. Now he's going to head to mid lane with his Siege Creep still in tow. Good old Cardi. 
did get the breathe fire on him, so it does take a little bit of damage reduction. In the meantime, Envy is about to get ganked to top lane, the flare to come through. Uh, however, the... He's gonna get off the ultimate from Envy, he's just gonna walk out. However, there's another hero coming in. It is going to be Fata. Scream of Pain to come through. Sonic Wave is available, and KP is going to skewer him away. But uh, jumping in is Envy. Shockwave to come through. Sonic Wave not needed. They can even perhaps go for another if they wanted to try to find Kaka. Meanwhile, bottom lane, MSS starting to put a lot of pressure on Moogie here. So, again, man, we talked about it, and you just mentioned it, too. These lanes are starting to go pretty disastrously for, for Newbie. I mean, it's a 2.5k net worth advantage at 8 minutes, and Kaka might be dead, too. Starstorm, they use the Shadow Strike, Sonic Wave again, still available, won't be needed. Last auto attack, he almost gets the bounty rune, that's even more depressing, is that he doesn't get it. Uh, and Fata blinks right in front of him and takes it from his cold, dead body. The Frostbite comes in from Pylai Die, looking to try to get away from uh, S-Triple-C, and that'll be the case. MSS in the tree lines, and now they really want to take this opposing Tier 1 tower down bottom after losing their top. And we'll see if there's going to be any contention here from MP to try to push them off this tower. I think if... AUI was six, maybe. They would be able to defend us a little bit more, but okay. Might do it anyway. I mean, Pi not having any mana makes this really tough. You can't fade bolt out the creeps or anything like that again. They might be able to go for a deny. However, here comes the wraparound from Kaka, who is an Indus rune. Frostbite, AUI in some trouble. Here comes the Kog. The battery assault as well. Try to eat his way out. Omni Slash to come through the Blade Fury. They use a lot to get that kill, but they do secure it. Nicely done from Newbie. Excellent work. And they will get the tier one tower on top of it all. A counter pressure being applied mid though. Fata kind of whittling away at the tier one. Again, so they do commit like all of their heroes. They dragon farm for that. They they committed the Omni as well just to get the kill on the inch. It's what we talked about. Even when you're pressuring elsewhere for newbie, you're still finding good farm for heroes like Envy and Fata. And they might even take this tier one tower. Breathe fire to come through, but the siege creep along with Fata getting the last hit on the tower and now working on his orc and malevolence already up to 1700. So he's got more than enough. That first uh, quarter staff. If he, if he wants more too, he can pick it up. Take that uh, top net worth. It's gonna be. Fata. Yeah, it's gonna be a crazy strong game for an orchid too. It's great against Jug. He's not gonna be anywhere close to getting a Mantha style anytime soon. There's gonna be honestly a 10 minute window to where that orchid's gonna be able to kill pretty much anybody on the side of of newbie. I guess DK being the hardest target. So yeah, this is uh. It's kind of a clinic, really, mostly being put on by AUI and his Enchantress performance and just being able to influence the lanes so much. As Triple C getting Shadow Struck, however, Moonlight Shadow not really turning into a kill. He sends some illusions to the high ground and those will get cleared out. But uh, I think there might have been a ward that spotted this um, Moonlight Shadow, the one over here in lane that was spotted. Alright, so yeah, I mean. Pretty good start for NP, but do they keep the pressure applied? What I mean, obviously you don't quite have that blink for MSS. In fact, he's getting pretty good farm, but he's not quite there yet. If he wants to go for it, he can also head into a different direction. So, do you wait for that blink dagger? Do you wait for that orc malevolence, or do you just try to keep the pressure on if you're NP? I don't think there's any reason to really play it safe because all of their cores are pretty durable and or mobile. So MSS is a legion commander. You know, 1100 HP. He's got the heal. And then Envy can leap away, the Queen can blink away. They're just picking these these hero combinations where one of the supports is able to influence the lanes very heavily. Like last game it was Wisp, this game it's the Enchantress. And then cores that just have a really hard time dying. Arrow, top lane, misses. However, the Impetus hits doing a lot of work on the KP, but Envy is very close to that tower. Frostbite to come through the Shockwave, won't be in time. He's gonna go ahead and bottle up in the Nature's Attendance to fly through as well. Kaka does not have his level 6, unfortunately, so Hookshot is not available. And, uh, KP will keep himself alive in the meantime. Fata, Scream of Pain mid, Dragon Tail to fly out. Breathe Fire is there, but Fata is still very tanky, and he's just going to blink himself away. And be fine. But... Ooh. Nice lift from Pylite Eye. I suppose at this point in the game, for newbie, the, the things that they really want, obviously, blink on KP, that's definitely up there on the list. They want Kaka to hit level 6 so he can get hookshot, and then they can start forcing the fight, right? It's not like running into them and then NP running away and then maybe getting a counter kill. It's okay, well, I guess if you hook a catapult, you're not really going to force a fight, but <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you, wanna, you want the abilities online to be able to get some pressure out on the map. 
Mm, man. This, this start doesn't seem very good for newbie to see. Oh, yeah, that's a duel. Sonic Wave. See you later. Duel victory for MSS. Siege Creep even pressed the attack, too. Wow. That's huge, because Moogie was farming very well up until that point, and now MSS is that much closer to his Blink Dagger. He just walked up and dueled him. It was nice. Sometimes you're just able to uh, just get in without a Blink Dagger or anything and just get that damage. Yeah. At the same time, I don't think he had vision, and it was, you know, obviously night on top of that. So he didn't realize what he was quite getting himself into in that situation. Oh, man. After game one, MSS really stepped his game up, and I think uh, this game might not be any different. Game one was a bit rough for him, but uh, this game's sort of turning things around here. Nature They're going to make a wraparound attempt potentially on KP again. Envy looking for an arrow target. KP would be the ideal one at that. Uh, Observer Ward will scout out. Meanwhile, Moogie mid. They know that he's not bottom anymore, so they can go for an aggressive play onto KP. But Dude, they have, like, this surround on him right now. But the problem leaving. is they don't have, yeah, they don't have much information behind the tower. That's Ooh, the main reason they just want to defend it. They need an arrow hit here, but I think they're just going to be able to back in time. Meanwhile, back down bottom, the TP coming through. KP will be able to make it away. They're turning in and looking for more damage on mid. S triple C is here, and now they'll rotate over with Fata, who had just used his TP, and I think he actually canceled it just so they could go on to KP in that bottom lane, or he got RP'd or something. No, it wasn't that or Stewart. So. The entire time that this is happening mid, like they, they have three or four heroes sitting around like this mini concave trying to take the tier one. Unsuccessful. And then AUI was just sitting top with a creep army pressuring the tier two. And they're going to send all their team up here. They, they even have the lane ward again. They found him. The flare was beautiful from Kaka, but uh, they need a bit more. The frostbite will come in for snow when the breathe fire is there. So they find the kill. But again, more time for Fata and uh, MSS to farm elsewhere. Okay. All right. Gonna find, oh, fresh Blink Dagger. See you later. Yeah, I look away for half a second to get that kill. I don't know, man. It, it feels like it's pretty bad for a newbie, but they are getting at least a kill or two. And that, they blow away the, uh, the Rubik as well, so they get both supports. I guess it's not that bad. It's only like a 2.2k net worth lead. It was just 3.4k, and that's how much it swings off just those couple kills. It's pretty volatile in regards to how much you get for like killing heroes in the beginning of the game. So yeah, like anything I would even say below like 5k at this stage is not really super telling because it usually takes some time for other heroes on the side of newbie, for example, to get up their ultimates, and that's when you can start seeing some some big potential. The, the concern is that. The hero that's supposed to offer a lot of team fight, like KP, there's going to be an Orchid done very soon on Fata. He's only like 200 gold away. And there's a Rubik. So whenever there's a Rubik in the game and you're playing Magnus, you need like another hero to be able to pressure the Rubik so you can get your ultimate off. And the only person who can really do that is Kaka. And I think that that execution requirement makes it a lot more difficult for newbie in the fights. That's not easy, man. I mean, Kaka is going to be... Who knows where he's going to be in the fight, where he's going to be situated. Hook shot. Let's see what he goes for. Looking for Envy now. Flair will come through as he go for the step to the tier 2 tower. But he's not going to finish this off. SCCC has finished up a Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, Frostbite, there's the hook shot. They're going to find Rubik again. He even stole Elder Dragon for him. He couldn't use, use it to any advantage. So another kill coming in. A newbie's starting to uh, pressure these tier 2 towers in the mid lane, so... Sort of evening things back up a fair bit on this dire side. Getting a lot out of the dragon form. That's one thing about DK that I think people underestimate. It's a it's almost a two minute cooldown, which doesn't sound like a lot, but every time you pop it, you really want to try to get at least some damage on the tower, potentially even kill it if you can, you know, if you have the time. Uh, AUI could be spotted out here again. There are just wards all over this top lane. Is he dead? Looks like he might be. He's pretty fast, actually. But the Crystal Nova does hit, he is going to use the Nature's Attendance, and now heroes are coming in spades. Orchid onto Faith, he is dead. Clock will at least deny the tower bottom, but now S Triple C getting chased down. Scream will go, they're looking for an arrow perhaps, it's the Star Storm, good Dragon Tail to come through, but S Triple C might be in trouble, more blinking in from Fata, another shot of Spike, they're going to get the duel off, can they get this kill? He is very tanky, they've got Sonic Wave, they will pop it, they won't get the duel victory, but they will get the kill with that Fade Bolt. Arrow's going to sail through, Mugi will sidestep, so too will Kaka. And uh, now they'll probably lose this tier 2 tower top lane. So just like that, trying to find AUI 2000, but instead they get turned on as a lot of heroes rotate up from NP. 
This is a very dead tower. I don't think that newbie sticking around here is like super dangerous. Oh, okay. They're, they're gonna go for it. They might even defend this. Siege creep will. They're outnumbered. Like they don't have their DK. Yeah, this is this is just two supports. This is dangerous. They have the arrow available. Actually, Envy's already shot it. Now, hookshot coming in. The Omni slash. The cogs. The turnaround. Is it gonna be there? AY 1000 is gonna get dropped. And Envy is in so much trouble. Overwhelming odds, along with that, of course, huge freezing feel from Faith. Moogie gets the double kill. That's what they were trying to bait out, and it's perfectly done coming in from the clockwork, and of course the jug as well. And check out this ancient stack that S has got going on. Ooh, hello. It's gonna get scouted out by a uh, Rubik Flare. But uh -oh. by the way, can we just talk about how good that hookshot call combination was from oh, Kaka? So Jesus, yeah, he's... that was so white winning. Because if that didn't happen, they were screwed there. And he's owning this series, and he's gonna find potentially Fata in this mid lane. However, he has already blinked away to the opposite side of the river. There is that blink RP available for KP and power level four. So again, these these heroes are gonna farm very quickly, both S Triple C and Moogie. Okay, man. You know, it's still it's still very even, and already newbie are heading over towards Roche. They won't head inside the pit though. They will head up and around into the enemy jungle, or rather their own jungle. I'll take that. Okay. The Manta is going to be a little bit faster than anticipated on Moogie, which is great because then he doesn't have to worry about, you know, Fata solo killing him or anything like that. So there it is. It's only like, I guess, five ish minutes where the, the Orchid was out on the field and they were able to just get the kills. And this is kind of getting to the point where it's going to be about Empower on the Jug that matters the most. And to see if, you know, Moogie goes for the Blink Dagger and just goes for, like, the teamfight play with that item and just trying to get Omni off or if he wants to go back for, like, the Diffusal Blade. I think the security of having a Blink Omni is really nice, especially when you have something like an RP on your team with the Empower. Because right. all it takes is, like, one good combo, right? We saw what happened when Kaka got those two heroes stuck together and how fast they just die. Yeah. It can be the same thing in a lot of different fights. It's just about how the engagement kind of kicks off for either team. We'll see. I'm kind of curious about that item decision as well. He actually is going to fuse the blade. Well, at least for now. But I don't know. We'll see. Tier 3 tower getting pressured by Fata, though. Moonlight Shadow to come in. Can they try to contest this? Roche is getting lower and lower. Flare to come through was stolen, I believe, from uh, the Rubik. They're team. losing their tier 3, by the way, while this happens. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. Uh oh. KP getting orchided up. They're going to find the duel as well. This is a deep dive, but it's going to secure at least a kill, if not more. Moogie does have Aegis. MSS is trying to deal with this. In the meantime, still the damage is going. MSS will TP. Fata will blink the tier 3. Hookshot is there. Fata's got blink in 3. He needs to get out. He's going to get dropped down. The Omni Slash is there. They get the kill. Kaka is keeping this game even right now, man. Let me tell you. He's owning. His positioning there was perfect. Like, he understood that, that he was going to blink straight back. And that the best chance to go for a kill is just to wait there, you know? And he just got the hook, like, straight on after the blink came out. Had the vision as well with the flare. So, yeah, he's... You know, from a support clock perspective, I would not say this is the best game to be a support clock, but he is definitely making it work. I mean, he has had uh, two Earth Spirit games to warm him up in the beginning of this series. A victory and a loss. And now he's got this clock. We're going to work. And again, I mean, a lot of the space that's being created, a lot of the kills that they're getting and securing are coming from him. But we'll see if he can transition into the later stages of this game. For now, it's going to be Halberd up for the DK. Smoke finally with his blink for KP. Can they find a blink RP or anything with it? They're going to move right into Envy, who is up on the high ground, though. No Moonlight Shadow for another 26 seconds. Okay, they're not going to see him. Just pass right away. There's pretty close. I thought Newbie were going to be able to find an angle there, but now they're going to head bottom instead and try to go for this tier one, or excuse me, tier two tower. And, uh, get this two pieces of movement. Well, I guess it's just a little bit of farming for now. There's not really much uh, split push going on from either team. It's just like both of them are occupying the opposite side of the map, more or less, and uh, just waiting to see if uh, Newbie want to try to go for the tier two mid, because I think that's a tower that NP will likely want to defend, because mid is a very hard lane to push. And top at the same time doesn't even have a tier 2, so if AUI wants to stick up here and have MSS just sit behind him, kind of similar to what they were doing bottom when yeah. Newbie were doing Roshan, the same yeah. kind of play can work. And, and they, they were, almost got the tier 3 with that. Yeah, and they were wishing they were at the bottom tier 3 instead. They're already forcing back tier TPs, as you can see. It's right now just KP, but 
small, minimal amount of damage done to the tier 3 tower, but again, forcing newbie back is pretty important. This like Are they going to backdoor the tier 3? Is it protected? Radiance. It's not protected if the, right if the, now. the creep wave goes in top, yeah, they can just kill. Oh my god. There is, this uh, is so annoying. My god. Comes out, though. MS has already TP'd away. Unless they, like, if it, unless they find this, like, sick hook shot, that would have been huge, but no. That's not going to be the case. AUI is trying to kill Faith, but the Frostbite Freezing Field is there. He'll try to force himself out. There's the heal coming in. The Omni Slash Manta Sal comes through, secures the kill. Fati now turning around. RP, they can grab this kill onto the Queen of Pain, and looks like they will do so. Very good follow up gang coming out from Newbie's KP. Moving up to the shrine, they'll lose two. NP starting to slip a little bit here at the 23 minute mark. That's a big couple of kills they just gave away. Like AUI, you know, you look at position four or five players a lot of the time, they're not usually like cores but most of the time when aui gets his hands Ooh, the like duel, that, but are, he gets the blade fury out. off is this going to be enough there's no damage getting pumped out and moogie's just going to back away now that a fusel comes out and moogie is on the hunt one of his best heroes and he secures yet another kill jumping in kp was looking for a target to skewer and he's still going as triple c trying to find that stun but the blade fury coming in kaka misses the hook shot as well so couple of airs coming in from newbie but again they they do more than enough to get that tier one tower and perhaps the tier two and all of a sudden they're putting the pressure on mp they had a very good start but it's starting to dwindle here at this uh 24 minute mark it's kind of what we were talking about earlier you know you, you only get to make a handful of mistakes against this type of lineup because just how much damage they do with the empower Dude, it's like s triple c and moogie yeah they, they're just like Chopping this tower down. This They're tower, gonna even be forced to glyph. This tower between the two of them is getting destroyed. They might just back though. Moogie still has Aegis, but I don't think they want to go any further. They want to be safe. And again, uh, the Legion was back up, so. Alright, man. I mean, NP had a pretty solid advantage, okay. a pretty solid foothold, and now that is gone. So. The one thing is that in the open fights, like if you're if you're fighting outside of the base, for example, as newbie, you have really really strong team fight. But going high ground is completely different. You're kind of reliant on getting the kills beforehand before you start hitting those towers. Because say for example, AUI is up when you're trying to push, and he's just like throwing impetus into you, and you have like this DK and a, a jug core. It's not it doesn't feel good, right? So you need, you kind of need that situation to unfold where you get these picks and then you walk into a tower. Otherwise, yeah, breaching that high ground is going to be a nightmare. It's not easy for sure. And the thing we haven't really seen either is like Envy's like... I don't want to complain about the Rana pick because it's still very early on in this game. But it's a different build than perhaps we would normally see. It's the Dragonlance Maelstrom build, so kind of an old school build, if you will. Into the, the BKB, but I don't think his presence has been felt yet. I mean, maybe Moonlight Shadow, but in terms of a straight up fight, it's been really Fata and MSS. And even AUI 2000 a little bit, and that's about it. I think the thing that surprises me most about the the way that he's building it is that he didn't go eggs. Yep. Uh -oh. It seems like that would be... Oh, Lots of frostbitten. The Orchid does not come out in time. Sonic Wave was about to go another big kill. The combining of these abilities from Doobie turning it on yet again, and they will find another drop on Fata, who had a great start but has died continuously since about the last five minutes. Ooh, AUI. You were, see you later. It's also the Yeah. The cleave is so sick, too. And they're just going to push high ground to take this tier 3, I think. I mean, no uh, Fata for 28. Jumping in as Triple C needs to be careful. Telekinesis. There's that arrow. Maybe in trouble a little bit too far in. Kaka coming through with the cogs. They have no follow-up. Not yet. Sonic Wave comes in. As Triple C pops the BKB. He might turn this. Freezing Field will go. They get the duel off. They want Fata, and they will find him. Meanwhile, MSS is going to get dropped down. Faith is somehow alive. The Omni Slash from Moogie. It's four dead, and they're going to try to find the fifth. Pile I die, getting dove, and they're going to head right for this tier three tower. No buybacks except for Envy. And uh, Envy and Pile I die cannot do enough on their own against the full squad of Newbie. It has seemingly gotten out of control here, Draskal, and uh, not only a full set of racks, but perhaps two as well. This actually could just be GG, honestly. Mm -hmm. That fight was like so bad for NP. Like the healing ward during the duel, keeping him alive, and then the BKB being delivered to S Triple C during the fight, whereas like one more scream would have been able to kill him at one point before he got healed back up. That actually could not have gone any worse, I think. 
All right. Oh my. One more fight it was like, range move. It, it was two pickoffs, right? And two very important heroes to kill. Like, no Enchantress for the high ground defense is a really big deal when you have this hero on your team because you just lose out on so much damage. If, if the Enchantress is dead, who really is able to, to chunk down these super tanky cores like the Jug and, you know, S Triple C on his DK? Oh, I mean. Good press the attack. RP onto two. And here comes the cleave. Good duel. They've already lost Pile I Die, though. The Breathe Fire. Now MSS will fall as well. Envy is barely alive, and that is it. GG game number three, taken handedly by Noob. Oh, that was a nice little set of rhyming there. That was completely unintentional. <laughs> well done, Mott. <laughs> oh, man. What a game. That's crazy. That was looking pretty good for MP for a while.